Today in the news, Intel is borrowing some ideas, the internet is on fire, and HDMI 2.0 was a lie. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. During IEDM 2021, that's the International Electron Devices Meeting, the company outlined its path for the future. Essentially, Intel wants to, and is apparently on track to, continue Moore's Law well beyond 2025. Just like AMD though, they will be using chiplets to do so. And during their IEDM presentation, they introduced Foveros Direct. Now, in case you forgot, Foveros is Intel's 3D packaging technology, but it's not just about chiplets being stacked. It's about the interconnects and the way the chiplets communicate. Foveros Direct, their new packaging method, would reduce the die area required for two chips to communicate by increasing the density of the I.O. With a smaller die area dedicated to the I.O., Intel can basically slice and dice the chips however they want. The connection between the dies would be done through an interposer which sits under all of the dies, and the actual connection to the interposer would be through direct to copper to copper bonding. Hmm, if that reminds you of something, well, it's the exact same way that AMD is connecting the cache chiplets to Zen CPUs to get their 3D vCache going. Heck, it looks like Intel is basically just announcing what AMD announced just a couple of months later. Seriously, I mean, look at this video that I made all the way back in August. AMD basically announced Fulveros Direct back then. In any case, it's good to see that Intel is at least following the innovation in the space. Also, I'm not 100% sure, but Intel might be using Foveros Direct on Meteor Link. Maybe it's just regular Foveros, but we'll have to wait and see for 2023. Next up, it looks like the internet is on fire. A couple of days ago, a Java-based vulnerability dubbed log for shell was discovered, and unfortunately, it affects a heck of a lot of things. Essentially, log for shell exploit log for J2, which is a very common logging library. Log for J allows developers to track all of the activities in their apps. And when I said that it affected a lot of things, I wasn't kidding. Google, Microsoft, Apple, Cloudflare, Cisco, Amazon, and others are all affected. Heck, government websites here in Canada have limited usability because of it. It's a pretty big deal. When exploited, the hacker can launch a remote code execution, essentially taking control of a system. Now there is a patch. Mojang, for example, implemented it for uh, their Minecraft Java edition. And if you're a player, make sure you restart your entire game client. But if you're a server host, well, follow the instruction on the website. Site. iCloud was also affected, but it looks like they've patched it. Some people on Twitter had fun gaining access to DNS information. Now, it's easy for one app or product to patch the vulnerability. Unfortunately, since so many apps are affected, a single one with the unpatched log for shell exploit means you're totally exposed. Then we have HDMI in the news. Now, what if I told you that uh, HDMI 2.0 never existed? and that in reality, everyone has an HDMI 2.1 monitor. Well, it's true, kind of. Some people were noticing that some monitors were getting released and labeled as HDMI 2.1, even though they didn't have all the features that are supposed to be supported with HDMI 2.1. Just as a tiny refresher, HDMI 2.1, I'm saying it way too many times, was supposed to bring the bandwidth from 18 gigabits per second to 48, allowing for things like 1440p at higher than 144 hertz or 4K at higher than 60 hertz without changing the chroma subsampling. It supported dynamic dynamic HDR, VRR, display stream compression, and more. And I talk about these things like they were in the past because, well, it seems like they are now. When TFT Central reached out to the body responsible for HDMI about a monitor that used the 2.1 label without meeting all of the new features, the HDMI licensing administrator simply said, nope, it's all good, because HDMI 2.0 doesn't exist anymore and devices shouldn't use that label anymore. That's because HDMI 2.0 is now a subset of HDMI 2.1, and HDMI 2.1 is divided into two protocols. There's TDMS, which is basically HDMI 2.0, and FRL, which uh, has that higher bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second. And to be called an HDMI 2.1 compliant product, you just need to meet the specs for HDMI 2.0. 
So what about all the new features? Well, they're all optional. The only way to know if you have some of the features is if the manufacturer tells you that it's there. I mean, they will gladly slap the feature on the box, but why does it have to be so odd? In any case, this might bring about a wave of manufacturers using the new nomenclature, and unfortunately, some consumers might get confused. It's a bummer. In any case, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. For me to come back, uh, it's alright, it's all good. One step at a time, like I'm walking through the hood.